This video takes a look at simplifying and multiplying radical expressions. So the first thing that you need to know is that a number that is a perfect, uh, that is the square of an integer is said to be a perfect square. So if I have here 10 squared and that equals 100, 100 is said to be a perfect square. Just like if I have x squared, x squared would also be a perfect square. So would x to the fourth or x to the sixth. Those are all perfect squares. So let's take a look at how we would actually simplify radical expressions. So let's say I had the square root of 300. What you do to simplify square roots is look for perfect squares as factors. So we know that 100 is a perfect square. So I could rewrite this as 3 times 100. So I end up with the square root of 3 times the square root of 100. Well, since 100 is a perfect square, and I, br I can break those two up, then we would have the square root of 3 times 10. So your final answer here would just be 10 times the square root of 3. Let's look at another one like that. If I have um, the square root of 27. 27, does 27 have a multiple that is a perfect square? Sorry, a factor that is a perfect square. Well, we know 27 is either 1 times 27 or 3 times 9. Well, if we take the square root of that, we end up with the square root of 3 times the square root of 9. We can do the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. The other square root of 3 will stay inside of its radical because you cannot take the square root of it. If you're going to take the square root of perfect cubes, you do the same thing, but instead of looking for perfect squares as factors, you will look for perfect cubes as factors. So let's say I have the cube root of 54. Well, we know that 54 is 27 times 2. And 27 is a perfect cube root. So my final answer would be 3 cube root of 2. Let's say here, let's go back to square root real quick. And let's say I had the square root of x square cubed. I would want to pull out a perfect square of that. The square, or x cubed is x squared times x. So if I were to take the square root of each of those, the square root of x squared is x, and then the other x stays inside. Technically, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x, so that would be our final answer. Don't forget those absolute values. Okay, let's try ones that are a little bit harder. So let's say here we have the cube root of 16x squared y to the seventh. Well, you want to look for perfect cubes in each of our factors. So 16, 16 is not a perfect cube, but 8 is. And 8 is a factor of 16, so we would have 8 times 2 x squared is not a perfect cube because we want to take that 3 and divide into 2. 3 does not divide into 2, so we have x squared. Does 3 go into 7? Yeah, it goes into 7 two times, so we'd have y to the 6th, y to the 1st. I'm looking for powers that are factored, that can be factored by that 3. So if I take the cube root of all of this, the cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of y to the 6th, 
So looking at something like this would be y to the 6 to the 1 3rd power is y squared. Nothing else in this expression, the 2, the x squared, and the y to the 1st can be taken out as a perfect cube, so that would be our final answer. So let's take a look at just a bunch of examples of these so you can kind of get the hang of what's going on. So let's simplify each of these expressions. If I have the square root of 3x times the square root of 11y, the first th thing that you should know that you can do is if it's multiplying, we can just multiply through. So 3 times 11 is 33, and then I have x times y. Now after we multiply the two, the next thing that you need to do is look and see are there any factors that are perfect cubes. And since 33 is 3 and 11, neither one of those are perfect square roots, sorry, and x is to the first and y is to the first, this would be our final answer. The next one, let's say I have the square root of x minus 6 times the square root of x plus 6. And I go and I multiply those together, we get x minus 6 times x plus 6, which if you were to FOIL would be x squared minus 36. This does not equal x minus 6 because of the minus sign. So this actually is our final answer. That's as simple as we can go on that. Let's try and find the square root of 75. Well remember we want to look for perfect factors so 75 is 5, sorry 25, and 3. And so then we get the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And we can find the square root of 25, that is 5. The square root of 3 has no perfect factors. Okay, the next one. Let's move on to cube roots. The cube root of 27x cubed. All right, so 27 is a perfect cube, so that is 3, and x cubed is also a perfect cube. That just gives us 3x. Now let's try one a little bit different. Let's say I have the cube root of 54x to the fourth. So very sim similar to 27x to the third. Well, we know that 54 is 27 times 2, and the perfect cube within x to the 4th is x cubed times x. So, if we were to go and find this, it'd be 27 times 2 x to the 3rd times x. And anything that is a perfect cube, like the 27 and the x cubed, can uh, be taken a cube root of, and anything that cannot be simplified stays inside. Okay, the next one, let's go the square root of 72x plus 2 squared. Well, 72 is 36 times 2, and x plus 2 squared is a perfect square. So if I were to go and simplify this, the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of x plus 2 squared is x plus 2. However, because it is a squared, you need the absolute values. And then times the square root of anything that was not a perfect square, which would only be the 2. And this would be our final answer. 
We're simplifying the inside of the radical. Okay, so this one, 40, the obvious one is 4 times 10, and luckily that is the one that has a perfect square. If you find one perfect square, there could be two, so take a look at 10, make sure you can't factor it farther with any perfect squares. And then the x cubed is x squared times x, and if I go to find the square root of that, the square root of 4 is 2, so we're looking at the square root of 4. The square root of x squared is absolute value of x because it's an even root. And then inside the square root will be 10 and x. This next one's kind of tricky. So I have x minus 3 to the 10th power, but I want to take the fourth root of that. So we want to take a look at a power that is divisible by 4, and that would be 8. 8 is divisible by 4 because 10 is not divisible by 4. So what I end up with is x minus 3 to the 8, and how many powers would be left over? It would be 2. So if you were to go and simplify that, We'd pull out the fourth root of x minus 3 to the 8th. To find that, you just go 8 divided by 4. So that would be x minus 3 squared. And then in the square root, or the fourth root, sorry, we would still have x minus 3 squared. Now technically, there should be absolute values here. So you would be right if you had the absolute values there. But because you have the value squared, we would never have a negative, so it's always positive. So either answer would be x minus 3 squared times the fourth root of x minus 3 squared, or you can just go x minus 3 3 squared times the fourth root of x minus 3 squared. Okay, let's simplify the square root of 5xy times the square root of 10xy squared. The first thing you want to do before you simplify this is multiply like terms. So 5 times 10 is 50 x times x is x squared, and y times y squared is y cubed. Now we want to look for perfect square roots, so 50 is 25 times 2, x squared is x squared, that's a perfect square, and y would be y squared times y. So when we go to simplify this, anything that is a perfect square gets square rooted and pulled out front. Anything that is not a perfect square stays in the square root. So the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x is the absolute value of x. And the square root of y is the absolute value of y. Then inside we would end up with just 2y. So our final answer would be 5, absolute value of xy times the square root of 2y. So just like the one before, we need to combine the like terms on this problem. So we have the 25 times 5 is the cube root of 125 x to the 4th times x is x to the 5th, y squared times y to the 12th is y to the 14th. Now we need to look for perfect cube roots. Well, 125 is a cube root, x to the 5th is like x cubed x squared, 
and y to the 14th is like y to the 12th times y squared. Now let's take a, out each of the perfect cubes. So we've got 5, x, the cube root of x cubed is x, and the cube root of y to the 12th is y to the 4th. Remember, you're just going to divide this number into the powers. Now, everything else does not have a perfect cube, so we end up with x squared y squared. Now notice that I did not put absolute values around my x and y. And the reason is, is because this is a cube root, so you do not need the absolute values. If it were a square root or a fourth root or any even root, then you do not, or you do need the absolute values. Otherwise, you don't. Okay, the last one we'll take a look at, and sorry we did so many examples, but there were lots of little cases I wanted to show you. Let's go ahead and combine the like terms. So we've got four times eight is 32. X squared times x to the fourth is x to the sixth. Y cubed and y is y to the fourth. And z cubed and z to the sixth is z to the ninth. Now we want to per pull out the perfect roots here, the fourth roots, so we want to find the fourth power. Well, 32 is 2 to the fifth, so 16 would be 2 to the fourth, so we have 16 times 2. The next one is x to the sixth, so I'm going to divide 4 into 6, that goes in one time, so we have x to the fourth, and then the leftover is x squared. Then y to the fourth goes, 4 goes in perfectly into y to the fourth, but z to the ninth is like z to the eighth. 8 goes in, to, or 4 goes into 8, but then we have one power left over. So if I were to, to take the fourth root of that, we end up with the fourth root of 16 is 2. The fourth root of x to the fourth is x, but we need the absolute value. The fourth root of y to the fourth, I forgot to write that, is y. And the fourth root of z to the eighth is z squared. And then we are going to times that by anything that did not get taken out. So there's a 2 left over, an x squared is left over, and a z to the first is left over. And there's our simplification.